All right. And I'm going to turn on live on Facebook. <clears throat> Okay, so let's put that back on here. I think we got it. Okay, we are live for our mastermind call today with Winfield Cohen from the Chicago and Chicagoland area. Welcome, Winfield. Woo! Hello, hello. Afternoon. Oh, good right. morning to you. Uh, well, no, it is afternoon for you guys too now. Afternoon. Thank it you for having just me. turned afternoon. Thank you. Good job. We'll go to lunch later. Okay. So, Winfield, thank you again for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Um, you've been in real estate for how long? A little over 19 years. Wow. And what'd you do before real estate? For real estate, I worked for a benefits consulting firm doing uh, my degrees in finance. So we did internal billing, budgeting, forecasting, and exciting things like that. So actuarials? Similar. Yeah, yeah. somewhat. A benefits consulting firm, they basically managed pensions, 401ks, and health plans for almost all the Fortune 500 uh, big company that's since went public when I was there. It was called Hewitt Associates, then became Aon, we probably heard of. And right. In any event, that's where they're at. Wow. Fantastic. So how'd you move over into the real estate family or what? Uh, that's a great, uh, great question. So I'd actually gotten my real estate license at night when I was still working my old job thinking, oh, I'm going to, you know, this is a piece of cake. I'm just going to help all my friends and family when they need to buy and sell, right? Uh -huh. uh, it didn't exactly go like that, but I had gotten my license in November, or October of 03. And the company I was working with was doing some restructuring and the department I was in went from a, what they called a shared service to something being branched off to the individual teams. So they told me that, I could go find a job internally within the company in another department or externally. So I took some small severance and unemployment and went and visited friends uh, where I went to college for a few weeks and then went to another good friend uh, who was going to Argentina. He grew up there and we stayed with his family there for a couple of weeks. So I traveled the world a little bit, came back. And the following week happened to be a productivity school that Matthew Ferry was teaching, went to that and uh, hit the ground running. And how I got into real estate, my best friend from college actually had gotten into real estate. I went to Arizona State. And so he was in the Phoenix metro area. And I started buying rental properties through him. When I had just gotten out of college, I was working my corporate job and I was living at home with my parents. And people said, wait a minute, you own three houses? Where do you live? I said, well, I live at my parents' house. That's why I can buy the houses. <laughs> smart, very smart. He turned me on to real estate and he <laughs> turned me on to Mike Ferry and here we are. What was his name? Jesse Ogle. Okay. He, wasn't with, he wasn't in it for real long. Yeah, doesn't ring a bell. Well, he put you on a nice trajectory. Yeah, I, I thank him regularly. You still own those three houses? Yeah, I uh, not those particular three, but I still do own some rentals. Got it. What'd you pay for those three houses at the time each? At that time, the first house I bought was brand new from the builder, and that one was in Goodyear, Arizona, which right. is basically off the I-10, about 20 minutes west, west of downtown Phoenix. And new from the builder, that was a three-bed, two-bath, single-level, it's about a hundred and... 30,000 maybe. What would and that house, what would it rent for them? 
Uh, I rented it for 1600 my first year and then rents dropped a bit. I was renting, I think for 12 or 13, maybe in subsequent years. And then I'd actually put a, it was either my second or third tenant that I'd put in that house. I said, I'll rent it to you with the option to buy. And I put it, I put them in at an option of the house is worth maybe 160 at the time. And I gave them the option to buy it at today's price of like 175 plus 10% per year. Well, the, you know, what happened in the Phoenix Metro market, it, it blew up and they actually exercised the option to buy the house for me at about 185 when the house was worth like 230, which hurt, <laughs> but I made money. So I, I was fine. And, uh, you know, the market dipped after that anyway. So it all worked out. It all works out. Okay. Good. So buying real estate's a good idea too, right? Yeah. Definitely. Buy and hold. Good. So um, when you started in real estate, some 19 or so years ago, where did business come from? Prospecting. Uh, expired listings, canceled listings. Actually, at first I was only calling expireds and for sale by owners. I didn't realize that there was another, I guess, uh, twin brother, we'll call it a uh, not an identical, but maybe a fraternal twin to expired listings in our marketplace known as the canceled listing. I think right. you guys might call them withdrawns, but. No, uh, diff that, that withdrawns and cancels in our market are specifically different. For yeah, same here. So I, I was only calling expireds and for sale by owners. And then I discovered, well, there's canceleds too. Can canceleds work, but the withdrawns are still under contract. Oh, right. okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the cancels are, are, in fact, I talked about that a couple of days ago. We can set those up where when a property does cancel and the client fires the agent, that we can uh, get an alert in real time when that happens. Uh, is that your computer set up similarly in the MLS? When, I mean, I, I pull them through Red X. When the status changes, in the MLS, there's a way, in our MLS anyway, when the status changes from active to canceled, uh -huh. it comes out in real time if you set the mechanism for it. Yeah, 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 I guess I could do that. Instead of waiting for everybody else to get the same thing. The next that's... morning. Next morning, correct. That's a great idea, never, uh, never crossed my mind. There you go. Well, I don't know. Every system might be different, but I know that the CRMLS, which is what we're part of, um, that works. Yeah, that, that would work here too. Yeah. Okay. Thanks well, there the you tip. go. Guess the call's over. Appreciate it. Thanks for the coaching call. <laughs> <laughs> See, most people think I'm just another pretty face, Winfield. <laughs> I know. So. More to the exactly. table. Exactly. So expireds for sale by owners and then some cancels. And now you're going to get more cancels in real, real time. Good. Yes, exactly. Uh, what happened when the market shifted in COVID for you guys? Did it, um, would it have any effect at all? Did, were, were yeah. you concerned about it? Was there a mindset shift? There was minor concern briefly. You know, I had a few deals under contract and probably like everybody else, they just unwound immediately. Right. And uh, as you know, the, the breaks went on on the business. There was some inventory out there, but sellers didn't want people in their house. Buyers were hesitant about going into somebody's house if they even could go in. And so we, we had the breaks on for about, I'd say about 75 days. Okay. Here, and then... So that was what, February of so 20? Mar March of 20. March of 20. And then by, you know, that was about mid-March. So by June 1st, everything lit up again and like nothing we've ever seen. Right. And now it's leveled out a little bit more to normalcy. Got it. But it's still, our market here still favors sellers, but it's not as one-sided as it had been for that year and a half or so period. So has your where your business comes from today, is it different than where it came from in the beginning of your career? Uh, it's when I say when you say different, I would say it's in addition. Uh, okay. Expired and canceled are my go to. I love those. It's my 
that's my my reflex is the expired script. Um, I do some fizzbos, but I've also started to uh, really embrace my sphere a lot better. I'd always done the quarterly mailers of postcards, but hadn't done the best job of contacting them by phone quarterly. So I've done a better job of by phone over the last, let's say, four or five years. And then I've also enlisted a company to help me with some marketing to send them text messages and right. emails to where if I wanted to send a blast out, you know, if I'm trying to send a text message blast from my phone, I've got to, you know, I've got 900 some names in my PCSOI. I'm not going to send 900 text messages. And I wanted it to be individualized as to not, hey, friend or hey, client, but hey, so and so. Right, right. So I enlisted a company to do that, start doing that for me a couple of years ago. And they, I think they've been helpful. Good. Let me ask you a question. I mean, one of the common things we hear from a agents, whether they're top legend agents or quote unquote, an average agent that, you know, we might be coaching is they're not working their past client and sphere base. And, and they'll tell you that right up front. I just don't do that great a job with it. Why do you think that is? Why, why was that for you? Well, Valid question. I, I can say for me, I'd say that the, the root cause is probably efficiency. I'm analytical. And so when it's time to review a CMA, for instance, that I'm going to bring to my clients, maybe I over review it. And everything analytical wise takes a lot of time. Okay. And so at the end of the day, there's only so many hours left in the day. I've got three kids. And, you know, one's pulling me one direction, there's events, there's this, there's that. And I focused on the expireds because I felt they were hotter irons in the fire, more like today business versus the sphere of something. I'm going to call them. It's like, all right, well, they get my mailers. Hopefully they'll reach out to me when they need me. Whereas I looked at the expireds and cancels as these people just went off the market. They're ready to do something now. Let me go get this now business. Okay, that's fair. At some point, though, you've heard from whether you go to Mike Ferry events or you heard from top agents or interviews like this or, or your coach, at some point, you've been hearing work your past client, work your past client, work your past client. So when did that finally sink in or has it really? Mm -hmm. Oh, it, it, has, it has sunk in and I've been driving myself crazy over the years for not working it better. Um, and then it, I would say it sunk in to the point of me actually taking better action on it about a year and a half ago, uh, maybe maybe two years ago, but a year and a half ago or so is when I enlisted the company to help me do a better job of sending out text messages and emails, whether it be for holidays or just checking in. They're helping me send out mailers to the neighborhood that I live in. Uh, I've done a couple of contests where they've got me sending one to my past clients now where uh, you know they draft up the verbiage, but Hey, if you haven't left me a, a Google review, we're doing a contest of, you know, a hundred dollar Amazon gift card and, you know, some other surprise gifts. If your review is in by such and such date. And just for that, I think I've gotten nine or 10 reviews just in the last week. Good for you. What a great idea. Thank you. All right. Very, very nice. So uh, you met Mike Ferry kind of early on. Yeah, well, Matthew Ferry, and I think it was February or March of 04. Right. And, and Mike was at some kind of event here. Maybe it was 04, 05, just a real small event. But I had gotten into, I'd signed up for coaching at that first event I went to, but it was, they had, they had what they call the one on one, which is what now Premier. So they had one on one at that time and they had something else at that time called the Mike Ferry sales system. And so I joined the Mike Ferry sales system, which was, I think it was $299 a month. And that was one call, one call was a group call with one coach. And the other week was a accountability call with another coach or two. And I think we had actually one coach on one call and two on the other. And I did that for maybe three years and then switched over to one on one. Got it. So let me ask you a question. Um, you know, it sounds like you're pretty analytical. You know, I suspect what to do and how to do it most of the time. You started with expireds and for sale by owners. 
why do you why did you need the accountability? I mean, I, a lot of the agents say, yeah, you know, I went to one of those classes and I get it. What 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 changed for you? Because you've been doing this straight for 19 years, I think, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah, why don't uh, you take a break? You must know some of what you're doing. My mother-in-law <laughs> asked me that at lunch today, as a matter of fact. Did she really? <laughs> Just you know, kind of devil's sense. advocate. I called, I called her this morning and I <laughs> you prepped her on that, I figured. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, the old uh, analogy of, you know, Tiger Woods, you know, or Michael Jordan, the, the best people in anything, whether it be CEOs, athletes, they're coached, they're trained. And, you know, I had, before I joined coaching at that event in 04, I, I had started printing in those days, you know, we got the newspaper and people would put for sale by owner in the newspaper. So I said, oh, I'm going to start clipping these. I'm going to call them. I had my friend gave me the scripts from, you know, the Mike Ferry scripts, but I didn't realize that I didn't know how to use them. I thought these are just the questions. I'll ask these and people say, okay, come on over. I'll list my house with you. Right. Mm -hmm. So the productivity school, learning some of the scripts that just kind of wowed me to begin with, to realize I now knew that there was so much I didn't know. And part B to that was all the people in that class that I saw that had this fantastic business and they, you know, they were doing 25 deals, 30 deals, 50 deals a year. I said, wow, what does it take to get there? I said, oh, you know, I'll, I'll give it a try. My analytical side stepped in of $300 a month, right? $300 a month, 12 months, $3,600 a year. So I said, that's a, I think my average commission was maybe 6,500 or 7,000 at that time. So let's call that half a deal. I said to myself, if I'm not doing and Mike didn't pay me to, he's not paying me to sell coaching, but if I'm not doing a half deal more per year because of this coaching, I probably need to get out of the business. Got it. Got it. So there's the analytical guy back again. Right. It, uh, it grabbed me by the neck and threw me in. All right. Good stuff. So how many transactions you can end up doing or what's the goal for, uh, for 2023? 23 goal is 70, which I did in 21. I uh, dropped back to 61 last year in 22 and looking to get back up to 70. And 70 and 23. Are you on yes. track for it? Yes. Got it. Is that business your business? You have a buyer's agent, transaction coordinator. How, do, how, do, how does that work? I do have a transaction coordinator and I do have a couple people on my team but those are my numbers i don't i don't add their numbers into mine okay. basically they get something where they're, they're kind of on their own but if if something comes in where it's a you know so and so wants to go out and see this one hundred fifty thousand dollar property on a sunday afternoon or wants to go look at rentals i'll say hey you know Saul, you want this one great here you go take it got it, got so it. that's and about the extent of my my team and my transaction coordinator coordinator is licensed so he can help with, you know, odds and ends too of things that only a broker or salesperson can do, licensed salesperson. All right. But your 70 closings uh, that you're on track for, your, your 70 closings. That's me. Yes. What percentage of that business is listings taken versus buyer sides? Uh, typically, I've been about 65, 35 listings sold to buyer sales. Okay. I think I'm probably more this year. I've had a lot of buyers. I think I'm more probably like 60, 40. Okay. Got it. And that business still comes from uh, expireds and for sale by owners, a little bit of past client and sphere. My past client and sphere has stepped up quite a bit. And that's where I think the bigger influx of buyers has come from. Okay. Cause there's, you know, there's not a great way to prospect for, for buyers. You know, obviously I'd, I like to be instead of 65, 35, I'd like to be, 80, 20, or even 95, 10, because uh, as we know, listings take a little bit less time and you can put everybody out there to sell your listings. Okay. But, uh, but I'll, I'll, I mean, one of those buyers just came from, I had a vacant land parcel listed for a client of mine who's, we've had offers. They're not entirely realistic what they want for it, but I had that land listed for 285 Somebody came to check it out and I just closed uh, their purchase on them. I showed them over time how it didn't make sense for them to build for what you can buy for. 
and they just I just sold them one for 2.45 million because they inquired on my vacant land listing a year ago. Right. And you followed up and made sense out of the deal. Yeah. Good for you. Congratulations. You. So Thank 70 you. deals in Chicago is going to be worth a gross about how much money to you? About 700. Okay. And for $700,000, you can afford to live in Chicago? Oh, yeah. I'm kidding. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Easily. Yeah. That's very cool. So I, I'm sure you work hard, but it doesn't sound like you're killing yourself. I don't, I don't turn it off very much, <laughs> okay. which I could, I could do a much better job of that. My wife will, uh, will tell well, everybody I, on this call. <laughs> I understand. I get it. But, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's call a spade a spade. 70 closed transactions a year, you know, 70, 61 back to 70 is, is not bad. Maybe there's some level of complacency with me that I, I'm pretty okay. comfortable with that number. Yeah, uh, obviously that's kind of going on at some level. Yeah. Right. What do you want to do for the second half of this year? Try and flip all these buyers that I've helped buy into selling their homes for them. And uh, really just to, to stay seller heavy focused because well, it, it gives the time back a little bit better as opposed to a buyer that wants to go, oh, I work till 6 or 30. Can we go see houses from 7 till 9 p.m.? No. So let me ask you a question. I want to. Yeah. I'm sorry, what was the last part? So, no, I don't want to go see houses from 7 to 9 p.m. <laughs> so, let me, so let me ask you a question. You're putting buyers into houses and you're closing escrows at what? Five, six, seven percent Is that what it is? Common. Our, our, I know there's no such thing as saying standard, but standard in our marketplace is 5%. Uh, I do most of mine at six. No, I don't mean commission. Sorry. Oh, okay. I meant interest rate. Yeah, interest rate, what, hanging around 7% right now? Yeah, okay. So, so you've got, a year ago, you put your buyers uh, into properties at three, three and a half percent, right? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. So now you're trying to flip them at, you know, three and a half and they need to go in at six or six or seven and a half. Yeah. So what's that conversation sound like? Cause that, that's for us, what we're running into quite often. Do you have a, something that works for you? Um, yeah, that's a, that's a, a valid question too, is I, I don't have so much a script to handle that so much as I think it's simply pulled a lot of buyers out of the market, which I think is great because we can, maybe getting a multiple offer situation where there's two or three or four offers instead of 15 or 20 offers. They got a better chance of getting it. I just look at it from my perspective of, okay, when the rate rate shot up, there was a pretty good lull in, in buyer activity in January, February, March, you know, plus or minus, maybe it started in December and went into April, a little bit of a lull. And now I feel like buyers understand that I need to buy when I need to buy and I need to sell when I need to sell. And if someone's just simply priced out of the market, so we've got a major oversupply of buyers down to just an oversupply of buyers. Great. And uh, I, you know, as far as conversations around that to help them get comfortable with it, of course, they're only going to do it if they need to do it. But to give buyers their comfort level, I just reiterate how, wow, we've gotten so spoiled for the last 10, 11 years at, you know, two and a half, three, three and a half, four percent. That ship has sailed. And if you think it's coming back, I, say, I don't necessarily think it's coming back. But the good news is, if it does, let's buy what you can afford and what you're comfortable paying today. And if it comes down, why don't you refinance in a year or two years? And that's only a bonus for you. Right. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, so your business, your past plan sphere base, how big is your database right now? 910. Okay. And how much of your business comes from that 910 database? I think last year was probably 25. 25 deals or 25%? 25 deals. 25 deals. Okay. So you had 25 of the seven. So that's 25 one. sides out of the 70 sides? 25 out of 61. Oh, sorry. 61. Um and um, let me ask you a question. Can you give me a feel for how many of those are direct 
transactions and how many are indirect. And what I mean by direct, those are people that you have put into escrow that they, they raise their hand and they say, or you call them and they say, I want to buy a house or I want to sell a house. And you work directly with them. They're the client. Okay. Or they say the indirect is somebody who they refer you to a son, a dollar, a daughter, uh, a neighbor. Okay. Question. Uh, what percentage of your business is direct and what percentage of your business do you think is indirect? Probably 80% direct. 80% direct. Yeah. Okay. So, so Mike tells us that we, of the 910 Pascal and Sphere that you have, we should be able to get 10% of that number. Yeah, I should have 90 deals right from that. They should have 90 deals from there. Can I tell you where I think you're missing the possible difference? Yes, please. Okay. I think the difference might be coming in the indirect. Okay. okay. You're not... You're, you're, you're getting directs. However, it doesn't sound like you're getting the indirects. And what, yes. what we miss, Winfried, Winfield, is that there are 90 deals there. Th this is the part that a lot of us don't get, okay? The agents that are on, on this right now, they don't understand that the, there's 90 transactions in there. You got 25, but there's 90. Is it, am yeah. I making any sense here? 100%, yeah. And they're, they're in the indirect neighborhood. We're not asking enough people, who do they know that might be interested in taking advantage of this market? Who do they know that might be uh, you know, a, a, a son, a daughter? I don't know if you know this or not, but the last number that we heard in the last 30 days was that 40% of our transactions are all cash. Wow. That, that's a national statistic, not I a regional. 40% of all the transactions. Well, this has been going on. This, this phenomenon has been going on since uh, we were refinancing properties in 2008, 9, and 10 as the interest rates were starting to drop. A lot of people refinanced the property, took cash out of the property, and went and bought a motorhome. Right. That makes sense? Yep. Okay. However, that was 25% of the population, and those people lost their homes in 2008, 9, and 10. Well, they got their motorhomes to live in now. Though. But they have their motorhome to live in. Good point. Okay. <laughs> the uh, other 75% were conservative, more conservative people. And what they did is they refinanced the property, dropped the interest rate, but kept paying the higher rate. The higher, not rate, sorry, kept paying the higher payment. Yes. Okay, so then in the next 10 years, their houses paid off. That makes sense? It, it does. So instead of a, a 30 year payoff, it got paid off in 20 years or 15 years. So sure. now all of these people have a paid off free and clear asset. When they sell it, it turns into cash and they buy for cash. Sure. Interesting, huh? Makes sense. So indirect, you've got, you have the possibility of picking up, if you did nothing else, of just working your past land sphere. So here's, here's what we've been teaching here. Email weekly, snail mail um, monthly, phone call every other month, and the month you're not phone calling, text. That's over 71 contacts a year. Pretty cool, huh? Very cool. You should be able to do at least 10% of that number. That's going to increase your business by 25, 30 deals by doing nothing else. You'll get to 100 by doing nothing else but focusing on your past client and sphere. I think that, that sounds fantastic. Does that sound doable? It's definitely doable. You know, Marcy, what's Marcy's last name, Robert? Marcy Murphy. Marcy Murphy, you know her? Yeah. Hey, she and I had the same conversation two years ago. She just went over a million dollars this last year. Identical conversation, Winfield. You, you and I are having a conversation. My agents are not going to hear this or listen to it. They're certainly not going to do it. Okay. 
I appreciate the live coaching call in front of uh, everyone. <laughs> anyway, now uh, I've got accountability. <laughs> but you can see, you can see that by shifting gears slightly in your business, you'll go over a hundred deals. Now, the agents that are with my company that are still on this call have heard this for 15 years. Some of them are doing it, Robert, but some aren't, huh? Okay. So is that something you could focus in on, Winfield? That's a great target, yes. Excellent. Very, very good. Okay. So your business going into the second half of this year. So, so far this year, you've closed, I don't know, 30-ish transactions closed and pending? Uh, let's see. I'll tell you exactly. I've got my numbers analyzer here on the other screen. maybe. But yeah, about, about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so what do you need to do in the second half of the year that's different in the first half of the year to get to 100? Because that's really where you should be going, where you should be marching to. So what has to change, if anything? Well, I think, uh, you know, I've stepped up my PC and SOI, but to now take it another step. Because that's one of been that's been one of my biggest leaks. You know, if Mike says ten percent of your business, or you should get ten percent return on your database. So nine, ten. Let's even call let's call half of them garbage. And I don't think they are, but let's call half of them nine, ten. Now call it four fifty or four fifty five. That's forty five deals right there. I, I should be. And you're at twenty five. Twenty to twenty five. Yeah, I mean really fifteen off of that. Right. Well, I mean, there. I'm I'm leaving a good probably. I'll say conservatively, there's at least a good 25 to 30 deals left on the table every so year. So that 30 is your 100. Right, exactly. That 30 is your 100. So I'm having this conversation with Winfield and kind of a little bit putting him on the spot. But I'm, I'm what I'm trying to do is, is do somewhat of a live coaching call for all of the agents that are on here that can see if you could just tweak it slightly and rethink it a little bit as Win Winfield has, then you can go from 70 to 100 and still do it in the second half of this year. It's possible. That makes sense, everybody? Anybody? Besides Robert? Yes, Anybody get it? yes, it yes Neil. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And, yes. and it's it's not that big a deal. And the good news is it's not even mid-year yet. You still have a few days. You could like get a jump start today. So let me ask you something, Winfield. This has to be the next part of this, and it's for everyone else. What are you gonna do? 30 deals more than what you plan for is worth $300,000. Yeah, call it 300. $300,000. Okay. What specifically would you, can you do with that $300,000 that would be life changing? And don't tell me pay off your bills. <laughs> I don't have any bills. Good. Good to hear. Uh, I, I, my, I have my mortgage on my house. That's, that's my only bill. Okay. Uh, and monthly credit cards, but that's paid off every month. Uh, what, what would I do? Well, I've I've dabbled with the idea of getting into more investment properties, but I've I've had as many as five at a time and I've bought and sold some over the years. But I feel like I need to get enough to where I don't have to deal with them at all, to where I can hire someone. And I feel like three is not that number. So maybe I need to get back up to six or maybe 10 investment properties and then have somebody manage them for me and me not just deal with just go hands off. Because okay. long term, real estate only goes up in value. For sure. Can I can I make a suggestion here too? Of course, please. Every purchase you have has to go to a management company. The deal has to be able to break even with a management company. Get it? So every purchase you make, so you have to put either a little Say bit. Say when more, running the numbers on it, principal, interest, taxes, insurance, management, and and one hundred and fifty or eighty or whatever the cost is for a management person. 
okay, from property one. Why? Because that'll get you to property six pretty quick. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise you won't do it. You don't want to do it. I don't want a phone call at three o'clock in the morning that the plumbing's backed up. Right. Okay. I get one of those phone calls and everything gets sold the next day. Right. Okay. No. So you have to give it to a property management company or, or, or person or something. And, and it just has to be uh, part of the deal. Mike Ferry reminds me all the time. It's not that we can't afford it. It's we just don't make enough money yet. Yep. Okay. So just figure it in the deal and you'll buy more deals. That's what the $300,000 is going to do for you. 300,000, I don't know, get you a couple pieces of property, including paying for the management. Oh yeah. I mean, that would, I could buy a couple cash here for that. Okay. Well, there you go. You know, and then let the management company manage it period. End of conversation. Yeah. Um, so kind of go from there. I mean, is, is this, is this conversation making you uncomfortable? Is it kind of exciting? Talk to me. It's exciting and it's lighting a fire under my rear end. Good, good, excellent. That's what we're trying to- Money sitting in the bank doesn't do much, even though interest rates are up. It does. Sorry? <laughs> Money sitting in the bank doesn't do much, even though interest no, rates no. are up. No, I mean, you feel good, but it's, good. it's a complacency issue. Yep. You're a young man. You can buy yourself a couple pieces of property a year for the next, I don't know, how old are you right now? 44. So think about this. If you bought two houses a year for the next 15 years, so you'd be 44, you would be 54, you would be- Call it, call it 60. All right, 60 years old. So here's the thing, Winfield. You're either going to be 60 or you're going to not be alive. Right. Okay. So at 60, so it's really hard to see 60 at 44. All right. Are you with me on this? It's easier it's to see than when I was at 34, but yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> and I, look, I'm at 72 right now and I never could see 72 at any place. Okay. And yet sure. we're still buying and selling property and doing things and thinking ahead. But Think about this, 44 to uh, in 15 years, you're going to be, what do we say, 60 years old? Yeah. Call it 60. You're going to be 60 years old. Your first property that you bought pays off. You bought one prop, uh, two properties a year for the next 15 years. So you have, you have how many properties in, fifth, in 15 years? 30. 30 pieces plus of property. what I've already got, yeah. So, so Plus what you already have. Okay, so at the end of 15 years, you end up with your first two houses paying off. Let's just say they cost you a couple hundred thousand dollars each and you made $1,500 a month in cash flow. You would have, let's assume zero appreciation, zero appreciation in 15 years. So your first two houses you bought for, I don't know, 200,000, let's say, sure. is that a fair number? Yes. So you bought for 200,000, they didn't go up in value. And now those two houses 15 years ago, 15 years from now, when you turn 60 are worth 400,000, 200 each, a true yeah, free, and clear. free and clear, right? right? The tenant paid off the mortgage. And now you've got a couple thousand dollars a month coming in as passive income. The next year on your 61st birthday, you have two more properties pay off. And those two properties again are, 200,000 each, $400,000. Now you have $800,000 in true net, net equity and four, $8,000 a month coming in as passive income. Now let's fast forward to 70 years old. 70 years old, your 10th house, you're 10 years into this, but you have your 20th property pays off. You now have 20 properties worth $200,000 each, which is $4 million. And you have what am I talking about? Uh, Twenty, forty thousand dollars a month coming in as passive income, and the tenant paid off this money, and you, the property management's taking care of all the crap. And you know what the good news is? What's that? At seventy years old, you still have six properties or eight properties left over that'll pay off. Yep. 
Pretty amazing, huh? And I can cherry pick how much prospecting and how much I want to do there. I can, you know, do 10, 15 deals a year, cherry pick who I want to work with. And, and the thing is, you're that. going to be 70 years old or you're not going to be alive. Right. So let's figure you're going to be 70. So let's get into action on this. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of you have heard me do this before. This is what you need to be doing every single day. Questions on what we talked about, Winfield? No specific questions, but I can tell you one of my biggest takeaways is, of course, uh, stepping up my PCSOI to even more contacts. And as much as I have so many resources for so much real estate related, I don't have anybody really great property management wise. So that's the follow up I'm going to do with my office, see who knows people for property management. And you know, if that was off that albatross was off my neck. I wouldn't have any problem buying properties. I'll, I'll get them, I'll get them leased out because I can handle the listing on that. Done. Right. And then here you go, run with it. Right. right. That's it. So the issue goes away. Just uh, look for five star reviews from Yelp and interview those people. Yeah. Great advice. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, okay. You have to find. 30 more deals on top of what you're regularly going to find in the second half. You say you're going to step up your PCCOI. What's that going to look like for you? And, the, and, and what I want you to be thinking of is not only for you, but for all the other agents on this call that can use some of your ideas to generate 30 deals for them or 10 for them or whatever they're looking for. Well, I can tell you what I've started with so far, and maybe again, I need to bring it up another notch is the emails that have gone out to my clients and the text messages are, you know, with the fourth, the fourth coming up, you know, it's a quick, you know, happy Independence Day, you know, appreciative of our, you know, freedom and this and that kind of stuff. And, you know, uh, and uh, any questions, you know, something to that regard, just kind of a touch base to stay in front of them. And I think that's helped me already in this past year of a few more PCSOI deals just by being in people's forefront on their mind. Um, so I guess kicking sure. that an extra notch. Okay, good. So send out some more text messages. Good. And it's kind of a fine line between, I think, over texting people to where all of a sudden they're like, leave me alone. Or, but what I, what I actually like about it too, is I've had a couple of people respond of, hey, take me off your drip campaign or whatever it is. Great. They, they said that I know where they stand, but all the other people that didn't say that, they're either not opening them or they appreciate it. Right, right. A absolutely. You know, look, it's our psycho babble that gets us crazy on this. But if you email, if you email weekly and you give them something relevant, you know, pending sales, et cetera, and you snail mail a just listed, just sold postcard every month, and you uh, call them every other month, and you text on the month that you're not calling, it, as I said, it's 70-something contacts, but it's not in their face daily. True. It's not in their face daily. It might be a task for us to do, but it's really doable. Something else I've started doing over the last year is just when I take a new listing or when I put one under contract or closed, just posting that on Facebook, which I hadn't done before. Perfect. Absolutely. You know, people notice it and they notice things that we're doing. Um, and it keeps the, uh, the world a little bit closer. You know, I, I watch all my agents go on vacation, which drives me nuts. Why can they go on vacation? And I can. So I, that's <laughs> one of the reasons. My wife and I have that every weekend. Hey, why is that agent going on vacation again? What's going on? Look at that beautiful boat. We don't have a beautiful boat. What the hell's that? I'm working my tail off here. So uh, when I die, my kids will have a great legacy. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. All right. Questions for Winfield. Questions for Winfield. Let's pop him out there. Who's got something for him out there? I have a question, Winfield. Yes. Go ahead, come on. Um, so I'm a new agent, right? And 
I don't, I'm not in Mike Furrier coaching, but I follow his system. And I noticed you said after you left your corporate job, uh, that first, after the first event, you joined coaching and it was $300 a month, correct? Yes. Uh -huh. Now you weren't getting a salary from the corporate job, were you? No. So how did you, was it just savings you used or how did you, how did you pay for it? Or did you like to do a deal that first? Um, I had, I mean, I had a little money put away. I was living at home with my parents, but I would put it out there to you as I've at countless events, Mike Ferry events over the years that I've gone to when people are saying, should I join coaching? Should I not join coaching? I look him straight in the eye and say, listen, Mike's not paying me to tell you this, but just to pay it forward. I mean, I don't know what interest rates are now, but 90 days ago, you could get a 0% credit card. Put it on a credit card. You know, if it's, I don't know what the entry level coaching is. Maybe it's 600 bucks a month now. 600 bucks a month is $7,200 a year. If you don't think that Mike's coaching and training can get you in your marketplace, that's probably half a deal. If you don't think that coaching and training for a year is going to get you at least one half more deal than you're doing without it, maybe you should reconsider what you're doing. <laughs> you know or, I mean? maybe, or maybe I'm the problem. Huh? <laughs> Well, it's, it's, you know, you're just nervous about it, but use my analytical side to your benefit and go put it on your credit card or go get a 0% interest or 2% interest credit card or whatever it may be. And join coaching. You're going to, you're going to, it's going to pay for itself. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. All right. Good. Good question. Thank you, Winfield. What other questions we have for Winfield today? We probably put him on the spot more than, uh, and I apologize for that. I just, it was a, there was a couple of opportunities. I wanted to take them and I want you to have 30 more deals. Thank you. No, shoot me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Okay, other questions. Hey, hey Neil, so one of the points that uh, Winfield mentioned, it was uh, stay focused on heavy seller focus. Correct. Correct. So did you want to comment more on that or? No, it was just the focus on the listings. You know, focus more yeah. on getting okay. listings. I focus on the listings. I won't turn down a buyer deal. You know, as a you know, as opposed to uh, um, you know Tony Smith. You know, he doesn't work with buyers. I don't turn down a buyer deal, but my my goal is to build my seller business. Right. Absolutely. Have you always been that way? Oh yeah. Uh, all right. From the very how, how do you search for buyers? You know, especially. You know, earlier years, now you can pay for whatever internet advertising you want to. And the only thing that's going to come from that is buyers. But I knew how to prospect for sellers. You can't, you, know, you can't, there's no such thing as a, a for sale by owner for buyers, someone that wants to buy a for sale by owner. There's no expired listing for a buy. There's no pool of buyers where you can say, hey, you know what? I'm going to call these buyer leads. No, they got to find you. Good point. Good point. All right, other questions of Winfield today? Anyone else just raise your hand? I have another one. Go ahead, come on. Um, so when you first started Winfield in the real estate with Mike Ferry, um, I'm curious how much door knocking you did compared to like actually calling on the phones for expireds, canceled and for sale by owners. I have, in 19 years, I have door knocked maybe four or five times. Just not a big source of business for you. It hasn't been. I mean, I think it's got a greater impact when you're face to face like that. But the the time it takes to door knock, I, I just never really embraced it from that regard. I've door knocked my own neighborhood that I live in when I've listed or sold something. Uh, that and we've got about you know three three four months of great weather here. The rest of the year, I don't really want to be out in you know. I like the heat. I went to college in Arizona. I'm a summer guy. I don't like being out door knocking when it's 45 degrees out it doesn't excite me. how did you end up in real estate in chicago then i'm from here well make enough money and get everybody to move yeah it's uh <laughs> easier said than done since i built my business here and my family is here that, I, 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 get I, get I, I love going to college in arizona but it's not somewhere i would want to raise my family the culture and everything else so got it okay Excellent. All right. Unmute yourselves, everyone. Come on, let's go. Unmute yourselves. Unmute yourselves. Let's give a big hand. Woo! All right. Very nice. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Honor and a privilege. Much appreciated. Thank you. Making the time out of your Thursday to, to listen to me babble.
And uh, no, 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 on, no, on that no, note, no. I'll, I'll get you back for uh, any Chicagoland area referrals, buying, selling, investing, or if people just have questions, what the market is doing, what do they need? Yeah, thank you. Very cool. We're going to post your contact information in the chat box here. I think she's uh, she's already done it a couple of times. And um, uh, what we do now is we kind of go around the room and um, ask the question, what did we learn? What did you guys learn? And so if you have a hard stop, we understand that. And if you have to go, but uh, if you want to stick around for a few minutes and yeah, hear what- I've got a few. And Neil, personal thank you to you for um, for putting this together. I've, I've listened in on, on some of the other calls that you've done and, and I appreciate it. You know, I, I like your mindset that, hey, you're not just offering this up to your company, but we're all on the same team. You know, everything kind of everything kind of goes full circle. So I, I appreciate your generosity, and I think uh, there's a there's a big recognition you deserve for that. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so what did we learn from Winfield today? Go ahead, Emma. You got it. No. Yes, I'm here. You want to go first? What did you learn from Winfield today? Was well, something very interesting. Um, he has 70. His, his goal is 70 closings this year, yet he does not door knock. Hmm. That interesting. was interesting. Good. Good. He does it all by phone. Isn't that cool? All by phone. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Good. And so I guess the way what I was kind of sensing, you're saying, gee, if I use the phone and I door knock, maybe I could do a little bit more. Is that kind exactly. of what you're doing with this? That's that's where I was going. Yes, and I think absolutely. It's a great idea. Great idea. Okay, let's go. We got a whole half, half a year. Good. What else did we learn today? What else did we learn today? My new Gabby. What, who is that? Gabby. Go ahead, Gabby. Can I go first? Hi, hi. Uh, I was a little bit late today to the to this call, and uh, but. What I really like it is what you did, Neil, uh, the break out his business and how to help it to go to get these leads that was, you know, they didn't get it yet. And what I really noticed and I really like it is pretty much what you are telling us every day. So it makes him human and make us like, a, okay, this is working, you know, this is the way it's like a reaffirmation what you're telling us all the time and um that's what i needed so thank you for that you're welcome you're welcome